uh, thank you for your introduction. Um, yeah, the title you have heard already. Um, I'm going to talk about, say, some basic points uh, from uh, about parametric pressure sensing, and uh, then coming to the used uh, system architecture of uh, our proposed and presented uh, sensor interface chip. Then going to the specific, um, yeah, details of sensor signal conditioning, followed by implementation measurement results, and finally. I'm going to uh, conclude the presentation. So what's the whole thing about I'm going to present is uh, mainly the this pink or purple uh, grounded area, which we call a uh, sensor signal conditioning, consisting of some analog um, pre-processing of an output of an external sensor element. So that's typically uh, amplifications and filtering and so on, A to D conversion, and then Digital signal correction. Overall, this is a uh, yeah, call such kind of system as a smart sensor. And in the presented case uh, example, we are measuring an ambient pressure plus temperature, which we'll uh, we see later on, and provide a digitally correct <coughs> output. So, mobile, um, it's called to the point that it's really intended to be uh, commercially uh, um, applied and wristwatches, smartphones, uh, navigation handheld devices, and so on. And specifically, the uh, barometric pressure sensing is then um, therefore uh, improving the um, altitude accuracy that you also get from a GPS, for example. But there, we have accuracy, say, in the range of, at best, a five meter or something like that. So, And we want to achieve an accuracy of less than one meter for certain reasons, and then further, another application could be uh, just measuring ambient pressure plus maybe temperature uh, for weather stations, like you can buy them from where uh, an electronic store. A major point is, the whole thing is supposed to be uh, mobile, which means battery driven, so that leads to um, two things. One thing is uh, we have to deal or to really concentrate on uh, energy uh, low energy consumption or better high energy efficiency and you also have to deal with uh, changing supply uh, scenarios or for example in a smartphone with a lot of switching ripples and so on that needs to be maybe com uh, compensated for. So um, we developed the chip um, which is based on this uh, IC uh, system architecture um, like you can see mainly consisting of Two supply sections, this is the so-called high voltage and low voltage section. The upper uh, high voltage section is providing the uh, digital bus interfaces, I2C or FDI. And it's connected more or less to the battery that may vary from uh, 1.7 volts to 3.6 volts. And also having um, in this section um, a specific high performance uh, uh, low dropout regulator that providing um, a pretty clean and uh, as low as possible internal supply voltage from which the whole signal processing path uh, for the sensor itself uh, is generated. So that's already giving um, or um, yeah, following the constraints to have uh, as low as possible energy consumption. So the lower voltage, the lower the voltage, the better. Um, further, we see that in uh, the analog path, uh, where we connect our uh, bridge type resistive uh, sensor element to, uh, we have fully differential processing. And the whole thing is set up uh, as a regime matrix system, which means that uh, all the respective reference voltages and so on are directly uh, related or proportional. Um, to the supply voltage, which further reduces uh, distortion and respective effects in order to get a clean signal out of that. Then um, the sensor, uh, sensor chip or interface has an on-chip temperature sensor for compensation purposes. We'll see that later. And um, also comprises a bigger part uh, having an on-chip uh, calculation state machine that's doing a digital signal correction based on uh, calibration coefficients 
that are stored in an uh, on-chip NVM. So um, what digital processing itself um, is doing there, um, yeah, it's indicated on uh, this graph on the left here. We typically, uh, if you take you know, typical sensors, we have uh, mainly two uh, disturbing effects. One is uh, curvature or nonlinearity. And the other thing is that the sensor elements, as the raw elements, are typically uh, temperature dependent. So we get different characteristics based on uh, the temperature of the respective sensor. And it would just take this kind of um, nonlinear temperature dependent behavior and take a respective you know, digital reading, may maybe at this point. You never know if you're here or here or here or here in order uh, to determine the respective real ambient barometric pressure. So, and what our signal conditioning is supposed to do is uh, more or less to perform something like this to really um, map all these uh, temperature dependent uh, curves, to cancel out the temperature effects and further linearize them so that we get this bold black line that really can say, determine based on a digital readout a respective ambient pressure. To make it happen, um, it's required to uh, calibrate the uh, sensor IC uh, pair under known ambient condition. That's a uh, prerequisite for that. Um, and this finally leads to the point that we have a good uh, chance to optimally pair different kinds or different sensors, different kinds of sensors, to uh, one and the same um, interface chip. So we can use that not only for a specific barometric pressure sensor element, but more or less for any kind of uh, applicable resistive pitch type sensor, which makes it uh, the whole interface chip uh, more or less a standard component. This already leads me to um, our sensor example, so uh, where we made a use a commercially available uh, 3.4 kilo ohm pressure mems connected to our sensor interface chip, which is uh, manufactured in 0.18 mixed signal CMOS on 1.5 square millimeter uh, silicon. The whole uh, application range of our exemplary uh, pressure uh, sensors minus 40 to plus 85 uh, centigrade. And after calibration, we achieved an uh, absolute pressure error of uh, in worst case, plus minus 0.5 hectopascal and in typical range like on the room temperature and at altitudes, we are typically uh, in a daily life of only 0.1 hectopascal. Um, what does it give us? It's looking like this. So, for example, we can do some kind of indoor altitude measurement and indoor navigation. In this example, we um, took uh, the respective uh, pressure sensor and put it into some kind of bench test a smartphone environment and just walked up and down uh, the stairs uh, in a building and continuously over time measure. So the altitude itself is not giving the altitude of the or the height of the building, it's really the absolute altitude uh, referred to uh, sea level. And what we see actually is um, the first thing we have a peak to peak noise experience in our experiment here um, using the chip uh, in a calibrated uh, manner of uh, plus minus 14 centimeter. That already allows to uh, yeah, exactly separate the individual floors from each other. So the floor height itself is 4 meters, so we are, uh, our noise level allows fully uh, clearly to identify the respective uh, floor level. And even better, to the point that we have an absolute accuracy in this case, uh, the room temperature of plus minus uh, 75 centimeters. Uh, that's the, say, the absolute error if you refer to zero uh, meter at sea level. We are also able to really uh, effectively identify the floor, so which makes this kind of sensor an initial element to um, do effective indoor navigation, for example. Further on, um, like initially mentioned, the whole thing is, uh, say, intended for mobile systems, so energy efficiency, and of course also performance, is uh, pretty relevant. So one thing to mention is that our um, yeah, 
signal conditioning is on chip, which say competitive products and uh, systems which are documented or out there on the market uh, do not provide. And this is uh, essentially relevant if you go to uh, applications that you don't have an external DSP or FPGA to do the, cal uh, the calculations themselves, like a wristwatch or something like that. In terms of absolute ener energy consumption, we are, say, somewhere in the range where the others also are, but uh, finally getting a higher uh, effective uh, number of bits or uh, the highest uh, high in class uh, signal to noise ratio, which finally leads to uh, yeah, a figure of merit being uh, consumed energy per effective ADC steps. Um, so a combined performance energy efficiency efficiency uh, figure of merit, uh, which is a best in class in this case. So yes, this already leads me to the um, end of my presentation. So uh, what you've seen is um, adaptable uh, or programmable sensor interface chip for bridge type uh, resistive sensors with an application example for barometric pressure sensor. And um, the system architecture that we use is specifically optimized for um, energy uh, consumption or energy efficiency and noise immunity. Still, our pretty relevant is the sensor signal conditioning as a key for an optimized smart sensing system and with our point, plus minus point 0.5 hectopascal uh, accuracy error and a figure of merit of 0.66 nanogram per step. Our IC um, or the standard uh, sensor signal conditioner enables, to our knowledge at least, best in class energy efficient uh, high performance for major pressure sensing. That's the end of my presentation. I uh, thank you for your attention. If you have questions.